Awesome, wonderful start. Sign, seal, delivered, I'm yours. Hi there, I'm Dr. Announcements. I'm not a real doctor, but I do play one for these announcements. And I'm here to give you some good tips for your spiritual health today. Some wonderful things happening around Mile High Church. We have a couple of great summer classes that we're excited to tell you about. We're very happy that Reverend Josh is going to be teaching an online class called The Mystical Jesus. In this class, it's a, a wonderful opportunity to deepen into your understanding of the history and the mystical presence of Jesus of Nazareth and uh, to explore his revolutionary teachings to unveil the mystical Christ available to each one of us today. Tuesday nights, beginning August 15th at 6.30 p.m. Now, I would prescribe this class to any of you who might really love the message of Jesus already and want to go deeper with it, or to any of you who feel frustrated and lost and confused about the message of Jesus and want to understand and have a deeper experience of his teachings. So if that's you, you want to take this class. And we're also happy that Reverend Jackie Harris is going to be teaching a class in person on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. beginning August 17th called Living Untethered. Based on the book by the wonderful and popular author Michael Singer, he has a new book called Living Untethered Beyond the Human Predicament. And this class will help you deal with the three-ring circus of daily life that may be tethering you to distractions. I would prescribe this class for any of you who think you're too busy to take it. This is your class. In person here, Thursday mornings at Mile High Church. Come and join Reverend Jackie for that. And we have our annual meeting coming up next Sunday at 1130 over in the Vote Center Auditorium. This meeting is for any and all people who would like to come and have a wonderful update about Mile High Church, hear about the finances, and meet our new Board of Trustees. And if you are a member of our community, you have the opportunity to actually get to vote. So we'd love for you to come and uh, participate in this process. And I would prescribe this meeting for any of you who love Mile High Church. It's your meeting. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. And lastly, would you like to be 10% happier? Well, we've got the answer. We have the wonderful speaker, author, former ABC anchor Dan Harris coming to be with us on November 3rd at 7 o'clock. You can be here in the Teal Auditorium or you can join us online. You can tell all your friends about it all over the world. It's going to be a wonderful event based on his book that 10% um, Happier, Mindfulness and Meditation, Self-Help That Actually Works. He's going to speak to us. He's going to lead us through a couple of meditations. It's going to be a wonderful night and I would prescribe this event for anyone who simply wants to be happier and wants the same for their loved ones. And now, of course, with all of these, these prescribed things, there do come warnings. So here is your warning. Don't take any of these events while operating a motor vehicle or heavy machinery. Side effects of attending any or all these events may be greater sense of well-being and happiness that can last for years and years. You can go to the event center, milehighchurch.org, to register for any of these. See you later. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. Hello, my Ohio. Hey. It's 10.03. Are we ready to, like, stand and maybe move a little bit and get in our bodies and come together in the music? Gianna's here. Say hi, Gianna. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right, so let's sing together, shall we?
Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Gianna. Thank you, Mile High Band. Uh, hey, Gianna, I think this is your first time performing since you graduated nursing school, and that takes such commitment and dedication that we want to not that that pass us by. Congratulations, and thank you for sharing your gifts with us. How about Dr. Michelle? I think we need a full sermon from the doctor in this case. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Mile High Church, everyone here in the sanctuary. So good to see you. Dr. Raz Smith and Tina are here. Bill and Sue Loving are over here. It's a great place to be. But we welcome you if you're watching online as, w as well, wherever you are. And we're beginning exploring the theme of, of everyday spirituality here for the next few weeks at Mile High Church. And it reminds me that as much as we go to church on Sunday, that Mile High Church is just as much about the Monday through Friday. You know, we sit here in the sanctuary and we take the gems and the jewels that we've discovered during our week. We take the nicks and scrapes that we might have received and open up to healing. And, and we center ourselves saying, I'm going to live a life that matters this upcoming week. I'm going to live caring about what I care for, doing the things that I want to do. And the great gift is when we do that, we become a blessing to others in the world as well. So we're so glad you're here. It's a new members Sunday. We're so grateful to be welcoming uh, 40 or so new members to Mile High Church this morning. And if you are new to Mile High, we have a vision and mission we love to recite each week that's coming up on the screens if you want to say it along with me. Our vision oneness revealed a world of love peace and abundance for all and our mission to serve as a spiritual beacon for personal empowerment and global enlightenment so let us center ourselves by honoring the week that was and opening our heart to an amazing week that can be an amazing present right here as we move into this time of song of silence and of prayer
very wonderful it is to just take a moment out of our busy lives to be in that stillness and that quiet and have a moment to connect with that divine presence that we see everywhere around us. When I look at the glorious mountains or see the ray of sun coming through the clouds, I am reminded of the awe and wonder of the world around me. And I see the hand of God everywhere. And when I look upon this world and all of the humanity, I see the touch of the divine. As we all are unique, beautiful, wonderful expressions of that universal presence. And in that, we just celebrate the diversity and the uniqueness of every person. And here at Mile High Church, we honor all paths to the divine. And so wherever, wherever people have gathered this week, whether it's a church or a mosque or a temple or a shrine, we just honor that, knowing that there is a good in the world and that we are it and that all of us are it. And so this morning, I am so grateful, grateful for all of the many hands and hearts and volunteers that come together to create this beautiful community we call Mile High Church. And whether we are here in person or watching online, we absolutely know and affirm that we are all connected through our minds and our hearts. We are all one. And so this morning, I am also grateful, grateful for Reverend Josh, for his profound message that just reinvigorates our sense of awe and wonder at the world and each other. And so as I release this with such thanksgiving into that amazing alchemy of love and law, I know that all is well, because all is God, and so it is. So sacred, so secret, so precious, this love. So sacred, so secret, so precious, this love. So sacred, so secret, so precious, this love. So sacred, so secret, so precious, this love.
so sacred, so secret, so precious, this love, so sacred. So secret, so precious, this Our words of inspiration today, first from Dennis Waitley. What the mind dwells upon, the body acts upon. And from Dr. Jeffrey Rediger, the author of the book Cured, love, whether a therapeutic session, a long relationship, deep meditation, or focused imagery, Love touches and heals something that medicine cannot touch. And from Dr. Keltner, awe is almost always nearby and is a pathway to healing and growing in the face of losses and traumas that are a part of life. She just wants to be beautiful. She goes unnoticed. She knows no limits. She craves attention. She praises an image. She prays to be sculpted by the sculptor. Oh, she don't see the light that's shining deeper than the eyes can find it. Maybe we have made a blind, so she tries to cover up her pain and cut her woes away. Cause cover girls don't cry after their face is made. But there's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark. You should know. Starving, you know, cover girls eat nothing. She says, beauty is pain and there's beauty in everything. What's a little bit of hunger? I can go a little while longer. She fades away. She don't see her perfect. She don't understand she's worth it. Or that beauty goes deeper than the surface. Oh, oh. So to all the girls that's hurting, let me be your mirror. Help you see a little bit clearer The light that shines within There's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark You should know you're beautiful just the way you are And you don't have to change a thing The world could change its heart No scars to your beauty
scars to your beautiful with stars and we're beautiful Awesome, awesome. Hey, Josh. Should we do some new member stuff today? Let's do it. All right, good. You get to go first. Well, uh, we are so grateful to be welcoming these new members into our church. It's a demonstration uh, for them, Mile High Church, but just as much for Mile High Church to have these incredible individuals uh, joining our church today. And membership, for me, first and foremost, is uh, about a commitment to our own spiritual practice, but it's also that recognition that we've received something here that we want to give back, not just here at Mile High Church, but in the world. And it's always a very special occasion. And I also think it's beautiful that we have members who have been here for many years. I see some names on this list of people who've been around for a while. And eventually, when their heart feels right, they can choose to join. And some who come right in know that this is their place and they're ready to join right away. So however membership lands for you in your heart, it's perfect. Whether it if it's never a fit or it's a fit right away, we're so grateful to welcome our new members today. And we also want to acknowledge, before we introduce our new members, our board of trustees who, at the core of all this, approve and celebrate and receive all these new members on behalf of our church. So if you're a member of our board, would you please stand so we can acknowledge you, our any of our board members. Here they are. Pat Berrier. Great. Wonderful. Jim and Kevin and Christine, thank you so much. So we're going to say their names. I'd ask you to hold your applause uh, until all their names have been read. And if I say your name, new members, please stand right where you are and stay standing until all of you have uh, had our names read. And we also have a number of online members, members who live at a distance and who are choosing to join today. So please forgive me if I mess up any names. Uh, forgiveness is a core part of our teaching, isn't it? Right, so. All right, Jill Anderson. Tate Anderson, Ooh, you're doing good, you're, yeah, back to it. Jan Boxer, Jim Browning, and Susan Browning, Charles Calhoun, Charlie, Mackenzie Coleman, Steve Dahl, Murray Davidson, Carolyn DeVries, Rachel English, Tanya Guywitz, Rue Havlinka, Rue, where's Rue? There she is. Jessica Justice, Rory Lindo Britton, Shannon Lipset. Brian Lewis, Lisa Lunger, Lisa Miller. I'm moving through some of these fast because I'm not sure they're... Oh, there's Tanya. Hi, Tanya. I can see you over there. Uh, Julie Midyet, Lisa Nilsson, Todd O'Connell, Sharon Pacheco, Danica Pierce, Eileen Piersa, Brent Rich, Jill Rote, Rain Robertson, Lisa Rowe, Robert Plimpton, and Erica Plimpton. And I think joining us online, Charlotte Pussy and Jerry Pusse, Alex Sorg, Jennifer Sorg, Gail Sullivan, Stephanie Vergara, and Donna Wood. Oh, there's Stephanie. Welcome to our new members. Thank you so much. And you may be seated. It's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. 
Welcome to our new members, and again, welcome to everyone, and uh, thank you to Reverend Kay, who's representing our healing ministry today, um, always, but especially just through the pandemic and beyond their ability to keep in touch with folks who are moving through illness or a healing process is just admirable to see. And every second Sunday of the month, we have a beautiful healing light service. There's a labyrinth walk in the community center. And then at the vote, uh, you can come in there and practice some devotion. And just so grateful to Kay and Linda and the whole team that puts that together. Let's hear it for them. One of the best ways to define science of mind and religious science is everyday spirituality. That's what we are, everyday spirituality. It's not just about the Sundays and the holidays. It's about every day. It's not just about having spirituality be a compartment of your life, but at the center of your life, infusing your relationships, your work, your self-care, your way of service in the world. It's not just about praying to a God when we feel that we need her. It's about having a relationship with something infinite that we are co-creating, fulfilling, and thriving lives with. And everyday spirituality is going to be our theme for the next few weeks uh, with different talks. Uh, Today's everyday awe, next week is everyday ritual, then we're exploring everyday forgiveness. But I just wanted to share, uh, if you're here or experience all three messages, what I wish for you. What I wish for you from this series is that you can embrace forgiveness as a daily way of life So nothing stands in the way of loving fully in this very moment. I wish for you to practice daily rituals that ground you in your own spirit in a way that inspires you to live your true life. I wish for you to have ever with you a ready awe so that you will always live in wonder. And I wish for you that even in the mundane, you see the divine. One of my favorite musicians is the great Tom Waits. And in the 80s, Tom was a stay-at-home dad. And the local school loved him because he had a 1960 Coupe de Ville, which means he was great for field trips because you could fit like 10 kids in there. (laughs) And one day, the field trip was to a music store And Tom figured, you know, he'd be recognized there. So he brought some autographed photos and things like that and got there for the field trip and no one recognized him. (laughs) Not the music teachers, not the salespeople, not the cashier. And a few weeks later, there was another field trip, this time to the waste management processing center. And the kids got to see what happens with waste. They got to learn about recycling. And Tom is walking back to the car with the kids, and it's surrounded by people. So excited to meet the great Tom Waits. And Waits concludes, everybody knows me at the dump. (laughs) And I love the story because it speaks to this idea that we may not always get what we want the way we want it, where we want it, but if we're willing to visit the mundane, even when we're feeling in the dumps. It's amazing what the Spirit can continue to provide with us. If we're willing to have that ready awe that is always available to have an experience of wonder. And that's our message this morning, everyday awe. And there's a really great new book by Dachner Keltner called Awe. The New Science of Everyday Wonder and How It Can Transform Your Life. And it's available in the bookstore. And it really, um, Keltner is a scientist, and he's really making an argument about the role of everyday awe in our healing process. And he defines awe. He says, awe is the feeling of being in the presence of something vast that transcends your current understanding of the world. One more time. Awe is the feeling of being in the presence of something vast that transcends your current understanding of the world. He goes on to say, what is an experience of awe that you have had when you encountered a vast mystery that transcends your understanding in the world? 
So engage with me here. When you look back at 2023 so far, this year, what were your major moments of awe? What were your major moments of awe? Self-care. Self-care. Great. Love it. Denver Nuggets. <laughs> the Laker fan is still attending the group support group. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, granddaughter. Oh, yes. Abundant rain. Abundant rain. I love it. Yeah. My first thought goes to spending time with my daughter, Nancy, especially in nature. We're out experiencing life uh, in the universe's primordial playground. You know, whether it be playing in a creek or taking a hike together in, in the mountains, it's not just the, the awe experience of spending time with her and being in nature, but as we know, when we spend time with kids, you can get those glimpses and those experiences of seeing the world through her eyes, that childlike wonder. That's the first thing that I think about. Anybody else got another one? Okay. I heard cataracts, but I'm sure you said something different. Kids in our neighborhood. (laughs) Another one uh, for me is, is getting to write. I love having time alone to write, uh, especially when it's creating sermons for for you. And in particular, it can be awe-inspiring because I can sometimes only have an hour to put together a talk for Sunday, and I don't really know what I'm going to say, and it just starts coming out, and I can experience um, a wiser part of myself you know, begin to, to channel through and to speak. And it's amazing when we prepare for awe how it can come forward through us. I also have multiple experiences of awe right here in this teal sanctuary on a weekly basis. Uh, One of the ones most recently was uh, our own Reverend Zamira gave her first Sunday talk here at Mile High Church at the end of May, and she was giving her Mile High testimony of being with the church here for 20 years, and she was sharing um, her own personal struggles with anxiety and speaking in public, and she's doing this in front of hundreds of people, speaking with such grace, grace, and poise, and confidence, and I'm always inspired when I see any of us, whether challenged or celebrating something going on in our lives, step into our wholeness. It's an awe-inspiring experience, and it's a great privilege. It's a privilege of a lifetime to behold and witness that type of experience. Anyone else this year? Waterfalls. Waterfalls, all right. So, there's some, some commonalities in some of what we're sharing because the thing with awe is you can't force it. You can't say, okay, I'm going to have my awe experience right now. It doesn't work that way. But you can prepare for it. You can have that ready awe. And so I want to share with you what I'll call today a few awe ramps, a few ways to prepare for awe so that you can live your life with everyday wonder and experience deep and transformational healing. And the first awe ramp is solitude. Solitude. Sometimes it's just so good to be alone. And the shadow side of solitude is isolation. It's disconnection. But that's not the solitude I'm talking about today. That's being a recluse. I'm talking about the kind of solitude that I've discovered in my life, which has been the most surefire way to remember that I'm never alone. It's in solitude that I return myself to myself from anything in life circumstance that I've given my spirit away to. It's in solitude that I can meet my God again and allow that divinity to have an awareness of itself in me. It's where I make that real connection. And, you know, we throw around that term introvert a lot these days, and I think we misunderstand it when we think an introvert is someone who doesn't like social settings or interacting with other people. An introvert is someone who recharges their batteries when they're alone. And in that sense, I think we could all be better introverts, not so that we can separate from the world and the people we love, so that we can reconnect with them with greater self-awareness and grace as ourselves. Henry Nouwen, the great Catholic teacher, describes solitude this way. Solitude is the furnace of transformation. 
Without solitude, we remain victims of our society and continue to be entangled in the illusions of the false self. Solitude is not a private therapeutic place. Rather, it is the place of conversion, the place where the old self dies and the new self is born. He quotes the 5th century Christian ascetic Diodocus of Photiki, don't quote me on that, who said, Timely silence, then, is precious, for it is nothing less than the mother of the wisest thoughts. When you achieve real solitude, you're able to put the life you're thinking aside to experience the greater life that's living you. The greater life that's living you. And we get distracted from it because we think this life we think we're living is so serious and I've got to make money here and I've got this to-do list over here and is so-and-so mad at me. Oh, I can't take it. Put the life you're living aside to experience that grander life that's living you. And solitude is one of the all-ramps to getting there. Another all-ramp is art. Art. Creating it, experiencing it. I'm so grateful when I have that opportunity to, to, to write, but for you it may be painting a picture or making music where I can again put that life that I think I'm living aside to experience that grander life that's living me that would express in this life that I'm living if I would give it greater attention, if I would create room for it to come in and make itself known. Thanks for entertaining me with all my musicians today, but another great musician I appreciate is the great Nick Lowe. He wrote a hit song called Cruel to Be Kind, and he wrote a great song for Elvis Costello called What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. And I was listening to an interview with him several months ago, and he talked about someone he called the bloke. The bloke. And he said, I, Nick Lowe, know how to write a good song. I can write one right now. But the real special times is when the bloke shows up. We in religious science would call the bloke capital B bloke. It's this higher intelligence. It's this aspect of ourselves that's always there, but we're not always open to allowing the bloke in, this greater creative spirit, to write through us or create music through us or draw a picture with us or whatever it may be. But when we create art, we express are feelings that have yet to be processed. We've expressed a, an emerging point of view to see ourselves and the world in, in a more profound way. We come back to ourselves and become that much more who we are. So we can express art and then we should fill our lives with the experience of art. Harold Bloom, the great literary critic, he said, wake up in the morning and read something important as soon as you can very meaningful to me because as soon as I meditate, that's what I want to do is read. But whatever the art form you're moving along with, I don't know about you, but I don't want to surrender first thing in the morning to the noise and the busyness and the cruddy consciousness and the panic and the anxiety and the, you know, the thing that I just expressed. I want to think higher thoughts. I want to think about what matters. I want to experience my life not as I had thought it was, but as it is in this moment. And there's a great gift that how you fill your life with art can help you pause and remember not the life you're leading, but the life that's living you. Frederick Buechner said of art, art is saying stop. It helps us stop by putting a frame around something and makes us see it in a way we would have never seen it under the normal circumstances of living. As so many of us do on sort of automatic pilot, going through the world without really seeing much of anything. Now the shadow side of art is escapism. Don't use art to escape reality, to try and numb out or unplug. Use art to plug yourself in, to turn yourself back on to life and what it means, to process emotions and thinking. You know, a, a Canto is a great movie, but it's not the only reason I sobbed all the way through it, right? There's stuff to, to, to be moved through me that can happen with a great experience 
of art. One more awe ramp, nature. The beauty of nature. Colorado in my six years this, this week of being here in Colorado, yeah. Is that okay with you, honey? We're doing good. Hi, my wife, April. Uh, you know, and, and this is God's playground scattered with McDonald's and Home Depots and uh, mini malls and all of that. And I, I love the nature here in Colorado, not because it's just all around us, but if you work really hard, you can find these special places and experiences that, that uplift you in, in awe. And how many of us have had that experience in rush hour on the way to work on home where we've experienced salvation, noticing a mountain peak with the sun shining on it? How many have felt out of harmony with ourselves and our lives and just stared at a river or a creek and thought like it did for a moment and had an experience of congruence and coming back into harmony? Nature is the great healer. Nature is the great healer. And when we can allow ourselves to be in it, we begin, yes, to even think like it. We begin to see there's this whole grand life that is easily exchangeable when we're living in a place of misery or depression or struggle or self-rejection, to give ourselves back to this life. And what it does is it blesses that life we're living with greater prosperity, healing, and understanding. The shadow side of nature is it can be dangerous. That's when I called Dr. Patty Luckenbach who after a windstorm raged through our preschool playground, look at her using the force pretty much to put things back over there. We love and appreciate you, Dr. Patty. Look at that. Keltner in his book on awe tells us the story of uh, combat veteran uh, Stacy Bear. Stacy Bear had, filled, had fulfilled multiple tours of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq and was living uh, back at home a miserable existence, suffering from trauma, PTSD, high anxiety, addicted to prescription medication, therapy not doing the trick, suicidal, no longer wondering what he had to live for and as. And Keltner shares, as he was spiraling downward, a friend insisted that before Stacy blow his brains out, he go climbing with him on the flat, flat irons near Boulder, Colorado, a series of five sandstone slabs that just upward to heights of over 7,000 feet. Stacy had rappelled down tall vertical walls dozens of times. On this day, though, tied to a wall of rock, looking down hundreds of feet, he froze. His body trembled. He sobbed. What was the point of his service? A career in the military, the lives of people he saw die, his life, a single phrase arose in his mind, get outdoors, get outdoors. For those experiencing trauma, PTSD, I, I can't begin to understand what you're going through in order to prescribe what I think you ought to do because I don't think there's anything wrong with, with you. But could it be that simple things like getting outside, simple things like spending more time in solitude, simple things like surrounding your life with creating an experience of art could help bring about a kind of healing that can help you manage and continue to be courageous, living a fulfilling and thriving life in spite of the incredible difficulties that you've been asked to walk through in your life. Could it, could it be? This is Keltner's argument. He says, everyday awe then can be a pathway for avoiding chronic inflammation and the diseases of the 21st century such inflammation is associated with, including depression, chronic anxiety, heart disease, autoimmune problems, and despair. I asked you to think about your awe experiences this year, but what about just this week? Your experiences of awe don't have to be transcendent, mystical experiences. They should seem normal, yet they should fill your heart with a, with a reverence and an awareness, not just of that life that you're living, but of that life that's living you. Anybody got anything from just this week? Grasshoppers, mariachi bands. I love this. I'm seeing these visuals. <laughs> Butterflies in my garden. 
butterflies in the garden. The Renaissance Fair. The Renaissance Fair. All right. Super moon, rainbows, wonderful answers. Uh, our family cheated. We got to spend the week in Vail. So all of those natural experiences with Nancy June, sometimes up uh, over 11,000 feet, were just all inspiring and filling me with that, that sense of gratitude. And I want to say something, and it may sound a little weird, but I just invite you to consider it, that if your life right now is filled with multiple frustrations or a sense of disconnection, anger, uncertainty, lack of self-esteem, that it could be that it's not a result of the contents of your current circumstances. It could be that you have the wrong thing at the center of your life, that you're living for the wrong reasons, and that your frustration, your hurts, your sense of disconnection is simply a byproduct of living for the wrong thing or things. What would it be like if we lived at the center of our life, not with the goal of trying to create money for ourselves, but with experiences of awe? What if the center of our life was not the ongoing continuation of conflicts and judgments and scrimmages with others, but healing? What if the center of our life wasn't a series of experiences of self-rejection, but of self-acceptance, love, and compassion? How would life be different? And we can even take our moments of frustration and uncertainty and judgment and disconnection and use those as awe ramps. We can use those to recognize that I'm not centered in the right purpose of my life right now, and I need to get back to it. You can move from stuck to flow. You can move from judgment to reverence. You can move from self-rejection to self-acceptance. And that can be the very awe ramp that inspires our soul. To quote from a favorite song of Tom Waits called San Diego Serenade, he says, I never saw the morning till I stayed up all night. I never saw the sunshine till you turned out the light. I never saw my hometown until I stayed away too long. I never heard the melody until I needed a song. Every day this week, I challenge you to ask yourself the question, did I have my moment of awe today? Did I have my moment of awe today? If you're not experienced with the awe ramps, ask yourself this question in the morning and think about the things that you might do to create and prepare for those experiences of awe. Ask yourself in the afternoon and see if you've gotten there yet. And if not, think about what you need to do to get it in the evening. Or at the end of the day, pull out a journal, something to write around, to write on, and, and write, what was my moment of awe today? In the end, you will not identify your life by the struggles, dramas, or challenges, but by these moments of awe. And it sounds simple, but it's really profound. To live a full life, feed your spirit. To live a full life, feed your spirit. Every day, to live a full life, feed your spirit. It could be a walk around the lake on your way home from work. It could be waking up 15 minutes early to experience a little bit more solitude, if you're able. It could be taking intentional time to connect with people you love and care about so that your relationships are growing and not just transactional. It could be creating that art or making sure the music and the films and the books that you take in feed and awaken your soul as opposed to numb you out to it. To live a full life, feed your spirit. And as we continue to feed our spirit, that life that's living us begins to infuse it begins to weave and integrate into that everyday life we're living until we can say they are one and the same. So moving into prayer this morning, I invite any of our prayer practitioners who so choose to stand and join me. What does it mean to make our hearts transparent 
to a divine power that knows the purpose and the cadence and the rhythm and the harmony of life in a way that perhaps we can forget or disassociate from? What does it mean to make our hearts uh, an open vessel to allow God to speak to us through the language of awe with a ready reverence, willing to experience this divine life that too many of us, because of a lack of self-worth or of attachment to dramas, have cut ourselves off from. Let us commit this morning to open ourselves up to a ready relationship with awe, that way that the divine speaks to us through grand visuals, through secret experiences within, through the gratitude of being alive, the ability to give thanks for everyone who's ever loved us and supported us on our path, to recommit and to see the central role of our life in supporting and loving others. What does it mean to live as our own soul, a soul in this experience of life, cultivating awe, reverence, forgiveness, understanding, self-acceptance, and a world that indeed works for everyone as a beacon of light without any illusions, grounded in the truth, co-creating an everyday spirituality that causes us to live the truest, most sincere, and enjoyable life possible. We let it be and become, and so it is. Amen. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me. Gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me, and I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, gratitude with you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Mile High Band. Randy, you look so suave today in that green with that guitar. So you look great, sounds wonderful, just as wonderful too. As we, yeah, let's hear it for our Mile High Band. As we move into our time of, of offering, uh, of course, um, you know, Michelle and I are just so grateful for all that you do to support Mile High Church financially. And I would say every once in a while, someone comes up to me and says, how can I best support Mile High Church? And my answer uh, when it comes to giving is to give automatically. You know, as we moved into the pandemic, the offering plate lost some of its value, right? And it was the automatic giving of people. It didn't matter the amount that helped keep our church healthy and thriving. And in today's church world, where we may have 700 people here in the room, 700 people watching online, 300 people listening to the podcast of the service tomorrow morning, the offering plate works in a, in a very different way. And so I would uh, tell you, we are so grateful for however you choose to give. But if you are willing to consider giving a dollar a week, $10 a week, whether that's sending a um, check through your bill pay, through your bank, or setting up an automatic giving through the text to give campaign um, uh, number, or the website, or even going through our guest services counter, or calling Reverend Jackie at the office. It's not about the amount that you give, but that consistency helps keep us strong and whole. And we are so grateful to everyone for the gifts that you give. Uh, so with that, uh, we take our gifts physically or metaphorically as we say our offering affirmation together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. And so it is. story about a life with a glint in his eye and the corner of a smile one conversation 
we notice when we look up sometimes they said oh we never make it but i was built to break the mold the only dream that i've been chasing is my own so i sing a song for the husbands waiting at the bus stop single mothers waiting on a check to come young teachers student doctors sons on the front line knowing they don't get to run this goes out to the underdog keep on keeping that what you love about his wife and his children on a run from a country where they put you in prison for being a woman speaking your mind she looked in his eyes in the mirror and he smiled one conversation a simple moment the things that change us if we notice when we look up sometimes they said i would never make it but i was built to break the mold the only dream that i've been chasing is my own so i sing a song on the front line knowing they don't get to run this goes out to the underdog keep on keeping it and what you love you'll find that someday soon enough you will rise up rise up Jennifer and Gianna, so good to have you here today. And Jennifer, I hear that you are in a new upcoming play soon. I am. I'll be playing Mayor Matilda Hyde in All Shook Up at Littleton Town Hall Arts Center starting mid-September. So if you like Elvis music and you like comedy and maybe unrequited love and mistaken identity and a bunch of other stuff, <laughs> it's the show for you. <laughs> Very Thanks, cool. Michelle. Congratulations. And if you are new to Mile High Church, welcome. Feel free to stop by the Welcome Center if you would like to gather more information about who we are and what we're up to. And we have some practitioners that are down front. They would love to support you in affirmative prayer this morning. So if you would like to receive an uplift this morning, stop by and see one of them after the service. And speaking of practitionership, you are holding uh, an informational session right now, no, uh, in, in a few minutes about uh, practitioner training. Yes, absolutely. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a practitioner, or if you're interested in just deepening your journey, uh, your spiritual journey, join me at 1130. I know it says 11 o'clock on the slide, but I haven't quite figured out how to buy locate yet. Mm -hmm. So 1130 online. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Uh, we are having a Curtain experience. I believe it's Wednesday, August 16th, 7 to 9 p.m. It'll be in the vote. And this is uh, about devotional singing and connection. So, so grateful to Reverend Zamira and the Interfaith Ministry bringing us that. And Stacy, it's so good to see you. Chalk art. Chalk art. So the youth is leading the charge for our first ever Mile High Chalk Art Festival for our whole community. So I'm calling out to all of you creative types, uh, whether you've ever done chalk art before, whether this is in your swing zone or you just want to give it a try, whether that's you, someone in our community, someone else that you know, uh, I am seeking artists for our festival. So uh, there's some things out on the 
what do we call those counters? Thingies. The counters <laughs> on either end of the lobby. And uh, I'll be hanging out there as well if you have any questions, but we'd love to have you involved. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being here. If you'd like, uh, Stan, we're going to say a benediction, and you can repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind, body, and all that I do. I give thanks for it, and I accept it just the way that it is and just the way that it is not. Thank you, life.